we've been enjoying our Relentless Healing class, and we've had two sessions already. Um, I, I want to report first, right off the back, uh, at the end of session one, as you know, my wife uh, had a broken toe. And uh, the doctor said that it was going to take six to eight, eight weeks to heal. Um, her broken toe, if you recall, was caused because she's, she decided to take on a new air curation because she needs a Sabbath. My Sabbath is golf, and, and she didn't have one. And so she decided to take up horseback riding. <laughs> well, um, uh, I think three or four lessons into it, um, uh, the teacher decided to upgrade her to a bigger horse. And with a bigger horse, there's different techniques which she wasn't familiar with. And so she kind of got the horse agitated at her. So when she got off the horse, the horse stepped on her foot. And it broke, it, cra it fractured her fourth toe. And um, so at the end of session one, she was here to support me, like a good wife, right? And I told her it's not necessarily to support every session. but. Um, uh, we asked her to come up to the to the center of the class, and then uh, some of you prayed for her, and um, and then we asked her what her pain level was, and then and and I forgot what it was at the time nine or something, and it went down, and uh, she was able to afterwards walk okay, but then um, um, later on it got bad again. Okay, well she just went to see the doctor yesterday, and again it's supposed to be six to eight weeks healing. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is now two weeks later, exactly two weeks later. And um, uh, doctor said, you don't need that special shoe anymore. You are healed now. So what should have taken six to eight weeks has now only been two weeks. So she wanted me to report that to you. Uh, yeah, she's walking around the house normally and, and uh, uh, she's gonna go back to horseback riding again. <laughs> so praise God, right? You know, God is good. And um, we're, gonna, we're gonna have more healings uh, especially next week because I'm going to be talking about the ministry of healing so I want to do some impartation some teaching not just teaching but impartation that we're gonna pray for you you know because you need to know that it is God's will to heal you always remember that was what we established in session one and um, uh, because once you believe it then come the the um, um, August 10th healing healing service that we're going to have, where we're going to invite pre-believers, you have that confidence to know that God's going to do some healing there. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it sounds good? Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for, for down, downloading unto us, oh God. Lord, um, so many people really don't understand healing. They, um, some have, have decided that they're not going to practice it. Some churches have decided they're not going to teach on it. Some don't even believe it. Lord, and it's such a shame because the Lord is clearly in the Bible and we'll, we'll, we'll see more of that evidence today. But Lord, thank you for giving us this blessing, oh God, because honestly, if all you did was save us, that, that's more than enough mm -hmm. just to be able to go to heaven. But Lord, you not only promise us eternal life, you also promise us life more abundantly here on earth. And Lord, part of that is to be in good health so that we can serve you better. And thank you, Lord, that healing is part of the atonement, oh God. Part of when you died on the cross, mm -hmm. you, not, you not only died for sins, you died for sicknesses as well, oh God. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, I, I thank you for that. I thank you for healing my wife, oh God, mm -hmm. just to see her uh, walk around, Lord. Uh, it, was, it's, it was just a blessing, oh God. And so, Lord, uh, we thank you for the, the healings that's coming our way too, Lord. There's going to be healings in this class, Lord, people who have been suffering, oh God, in pain. They're going to be healed, Lord. I believe it because it is your will to heal always is in the Bible, Lord. We believe it by faith. And so, Lord, I now ask that you open our hearts that we may receive what you have for us to really challenge us, oh God, but also open our minds, oh God, that, Lord, if our minds need, re need renewing because maybe some some past teaching, oh God, Heavenly Father, let us be open to, to the word of the Lord, oh God. Not my teaching, oh God, if it's just my opinion, Lord, but it's from the word of God itself, oh Lord. So we just pray that, Lord, uh, this be a great hallelujah time tonight, oh God, to get our spirits lifted up and our faith strengthened. I thank you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, um, as we get started here, I just want to do a, a quick review of uh, what we've covered during the first two sessions. Real quick, okay? Um, but before we do that, are there any kind of um, like rhema thoughts that you've had 
over the past week. You know, I asked you that last week as well too. Something that just really you know hit you, and you'd like to share it with the class, and also that will help to consolidate this newfound Rhema knowledge, this word of the Lord that that hit your heart. Anybody here? I'll share first. Yes, please. Um, when you shared about faith as small as a mustard seed, yes. as some translations say in the Bible, yeah. I always took it at that. Mm. And then when you explain how really the ESV translation is closest to the original, and it's faith like a mustard seed, yeah. that just kind of opened my eyes. Mm. And to understand what God is saying in the faith that he really wants us to have through yeah. him. Right. Yeah. Amen. Was that a big revelation for everybody? Yeah. Okay. And I hope you understand, you know, um, um, soon and very soon, <laughs> I'm going to be a professor too, just like your husband, you know. And um, um, so I'm not slamming any scholars or, you know, anybody. But um, we have to understand that not the English translations, there's difficulties with translation. And there's not one perfect. I mean, the ESV is getting really close. But there are even some stuff there that's not quite, you know, because it's human translators. It's not angelic translators, you know. If we really want to know the, 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 uh, uh, the consistent, uh, error-free air Bible, we have to look at the original languages, right? And, of course, most of us don't, don't know that. Um, I'm still learning, honestly, you know, because I, I, fortunately I'm good friends with um, uh, one of the top, top three or four Greek scholars in the world. I have a cell phone number. He endorsed my book. If you look at my book, uh, because I want to make sure that all my Greek was correct in my book as well, too. Um, and because I stay close to him, I mean, he, he's so good that on Saturday night, if I have a question about Greek and I can't find it in some commentary, because he was the one who taught me, he knows most of the modern commentators. They're friends. They're all kind of on the same level. But he told me that uh, all because you're a commentator and you write a commentary, and you buy a Logos bookstore, it doesn't necessarily mean that, that, that they know what they're talking about. Because it's like me. Um, I'm Chinese. I can speak conversational Chinese. But I definitely don't know the roots of every Chinese character. <laughs> I, I can't even read. Okay, let's, let's be honest. I can read like maybe, what, 30, 30 Chinese characters max, okay? And my wife is more like 200, you know? But for me, like 30, okay? And so I, I can't even... Uh, yeah, I can't read and write, okay? And so, obviously, I don't even know the root and the history and all that. So for me to claim that I'm a Chinese language scholar is, oh, you know? But I can say I know Chinese, right? Just like, like my professor was telling me, um, there's even some commentators out there that know some Greek enough to probably write a commentary, but if you want, want to do intense Bible studies, you probably need to go to some more intense commentaries where, where, where the, the commentator is a, you know, can understand the root word and the history and all that stuff, right? Does that make sense? Absolutely. So if we understand that, I'm not putting down the Bible at all, okay? I hope nobody got that out of me, okay, yeah. out, out of my session. And also I'm not putting down anybody out there because they're doing the best for the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, every, I believe every translation is good for some purpose mm -hmm. because even the, you know, I think one of the least accurate is the Good News Bible. Okay, because when you see them, for example, translating uh, 1 Corinthians 12, the, the gifts of the spirit, they naturalize the gifts. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like what was it? Um, word of knowledge is the ability to learn. Yeah, something like that. You know, well, everybody's got that. <laughs> you know, like, huh? well, what's so special about that, right? But, of course, the true word of knowledge is God speaking to you supernaturally, telling you about a certain fact that, that you would not have known otherwise, right? See, so, but it's good for children. You know, if you, if, for them to read the gospel stories and all, see, so there's purposes, right? So that's the thing, right? But, but since we really want to be accurate with our understanding of healing, that's why faith, to me, is such an important element of healing. And if we think it's okay to have little faith, we're missing out. And that's why I think there's a lot of healings that don't happen. Because we think, oh, I have must see faith, because that's what it says in NIV and, and NL, NLT, and, 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 and so I, I, I'm trusting in a big God. See, that's what, how we've been taught. Right? If, if the preacher preached just from that translation, but that's not what Jesus said. Right? So, great. great. Somebody else? Okay. I was encouraged by um, what you shared about healing, and that we did it 60 times before something happened, and to just keep doing it. And um, I always knew that we all had healing, but it was just something I kept to myself. But to hear it 
Right, right. I'm going to get more into that. Um, um, did I really teach on that already? <laughs> right? Did that sound familiar? Because that's in my book. Oh, did I? I think you, book? That show is good. Show that you read my book. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't think I taught that yet. All right? Anybody? I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. No, that's good. No, no, it's great. I was, that was my next question was, who's been reading my book? And so you got, you got in for that. Okay, okay, great. Hallelujah. No, no, we'll be teaching on that one, okay? Yeah, because um, let me just say, uh, that's what happened to Heidi Baker as well. As we, you know, most of us have really looked up to her, and I know she's controversial because, you, and the controversy comes from people who, again, remember I told you that there's some Pentecostal churches that don't believe in healing, and then there's some that don't believe it but don't teach it, and then the third statement, some who believe it, teach it but don't practice it, and the fourth statement, some who don't believe it, teach, teach it, practice it, but only for Christians, and then the fifth scenario, the fifth statement in my paper is. Um, and there are actually, relatively speaking, a few Pentecostal churches that believe it, teach it, practice it, not just for Christians, but for non-Christians, right? But, but you see, usually it's the people that don't believe in that stuff that see what Heidi Baker is doing. And, and I even see some of the criticism on YouTube, and their criticism is on another YouTube. And I'm trying to follow them. That's not what she was doing. Like, you know, if you have your mind all set up, set, set on a certain way of thinking, even when the evidence is there, you still don't believe it, right? It is. Yeah. Did I tell my story about about that doctor that was trying to explain how I linked in the leg? Did I share that story? Did I or did not? Yes. <laughs> yeah, no? Okay, I'll start it. If I did, then stop me, okay? Because maybe you just forgot it's a week here, right? Later. Okay? Um, again, going along the line of people just don't want to believe, okay? And so, um, in one of my healing services, I was uh, praying for legs to be lengthened, and sure enough, they were growing and all that. And then the doctor came up to me at the end of service and said, I want to shake your hand. He says, because I did research on you. Did I tell this? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, now you remember, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so remember he said that, that uh, I can't believe you. You know, you, you were able to tap on the 90% of the brain right. that normally doesn't function. And because of that, that, that 90% of the person's brain lengthened leg. And I said, wow, that's a bigger miracle than God doing it. Like, like, whoa. You know, yeah, yeah. See, some people just have to come up with some reason, right? And the same thing with people speaking against Heidi Baker and all that. But her story is that same way. She prayed, if I'll just tell you right now, okay, just to kind of whet your appetite. She prayed for 18 blind people, and none of them got healed. Most people, after 18, would have quit. But then she was so persistent, she went to the 19th. And that person, that blind person, the eyes opened up. So, and by the way, you probably will hear this from Renee. You know, Renee is on a Thailand Malaysia trip with our team. There's a team of 20. I think I announced that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And, um, well, anyways, uh, they set up this WhatsApp application, yeah. okay? And if you're on it, you can kind of follow what they're doing. They're sending out photos and, and, uh, and all that, okay? Well, anyways, a few days ago, they had a healing service. Now, the team leader is my, is my Chinese-speaking pastor, okay? Pastor Aaron Tsang. And um, I've been teaching him a lot of healing during the last couple of years. And so this year, he got really bold. He said, I would like to organize a, uh, a healing service in our Chinese service, but respectfully, pastor, can you not be there? <laughs> I went, uh, okay, no offense taken, but why not? He says, because every time you're around, people think you get the healing power. So, so while, you know, again, he's in charge of my Chinese congregation, okay, I, 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 I like to delegate, I don't want to, you know, if I'm there, then I take over and all that, I just let him run it. So what happens is that uh, uh, in past healing services on a Chinese service, you would have the, the, the different uh, people on the healing team, and usually one of them is me, right, because I'll do the legs, okay, and, um, but what happens is that because I'm on the team, um, um, most of the people in the Chinese congregation, I would say at least 60-70% of our Chinese congregation are seniors, mm -hmm. okay? Because they were, our church is now 63 years old. Mm -hmm. So we still have people that were there from the first 10 years of the church, okay? So you can imagine how old they are, okay? Well, they're very respectful of, of pastors. So I'm there, and there's a bunch of lay people. They all come to me, <laughs> okay? And then, uh, and then people who have legs issues will come to me too. So it's like, it's like a real imbalance. Right, like, like the other people on the team would get like two or three 
I get like 40 people, you know, like, like so, so, uh, uh, so he said, can you not be there because everybody will come to you or you'll think that because you're there, because of the, even if you don't even pray, even if you're sitting in a front row or whatever, do nothing. They think that there's the healing power emanating from you going on the people. So can you just stay in your office? <laughs> okay. That's exactly what he asked me, okay? Because during the Chinese congregation, usually I'm in my office uh, f- finalizing my sermon because the Ch- our Chinese-speaking congregation meets at 845, mm-hmm. and then our English service starts at 1030. So I'm usually in my office finalizing my sermon, be in prayer, and that's where I, you know, and then when, when our service starts, 1030, I'm out there, right? Well, so he said, just stay in your office, okay? So, <laughs> and actually, I, was, I, I saw what he was trying to do, right? And I thought, hallelujah. Yeah. Because he, you know, like, like he's my right-hand person in my church, other than Vicky, my wife. And um, for him to actually boldly do this, and sure enough, mm-hmm. in that service, which was earlier this year, not only did they have healings, instantaneous healings, but two non-Christians got saved. Amen. And I wasn't even service, you know? Like, he came to my office at, like, about 10.20. The service ended at 10.15. Came in at 10.20 and says, Thank you, Pastor, for being so obedient and staying in your office, right? Hope of the healings and two people got saved. I, I heard it because I can hear the PA system. You know, I was listening to the whole thing, right? I said, hallelujah, gave him a high five and all that, right? Well, anyway, he's in charge of this, this, this team in Malaysia and Thailand. So, so when they're in Thailand, they, they're just in Malaysia now, okay? But they're in Thailand. He asked the local pastor if they can hold a healing service. Wow. And I'm going, whoa, now that's thousands of miles away from me, right? Like, like oh, man. you know, like, oh, you know, at least in the office, I'm like a few yards away, you know, because I'm right by the sanctuary. But now it's thousands. And, like, he was that bold, right? And Renee's on the team too. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. If this has never happened in our church, two deaf people got healed Hallelujah. instantaneously. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. See, they've all been through the training. Renee too. When we were doing missions training, because part of my missions training was to go over healing, right? right? Because um, I said that when they put healing, it transcends culture and language, okay? Like when we go on missions trip, you know, we, we, we went to learn the language of the land, all that stuff, the culture, the, you know, all the traditions and all that so that you can be a Jew to a Jew and, you know, that kind of type of idea, right? But when it comes to healing, you don't need any translation. Like when people see healing, just, oh, and it doesn't matter what language it is, right? And that's why we place a high premium on healing on missions trips because that trumps everything, right? Even good preaching, really, I think so, right? And um, what well, confirms the, he- the, the word, right? And uh, that to hear that two deaf people, in, we never even had a deaf person healed in our own church. And it happened on the missions field. Like, that is awesome. So you're going to hear from Renee. He, he said, oh, we heard it already. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, right? God's good. So, um, let, let me do kind of the review. Thank you, uh, the two who should share. Um, so, the first thing that we established in session one was it is God's will to heal always. Okay? Um, just as it is God's will to save always. And what, one of my... Uh, so scenarios I drew up to help us understand that idea, be, to, to break that, that erroneous teaching from the past, is just as if we had an evangelistic event and some people don't get saved, we don't conclude that it's not God's will to save those people at that time. Okay? I mean, I know that some of them may resist and fight and all that. Well, you know, obviously that's a will, but that doesn't mean it's not God's will to save. But I also, I remember... I brought a PhD professor. I was I was running a um, kind of a debate at the university, and this PhD professor had all the arguments against Christianity. But I invited him to our service, and during the service, I had somebody sit with him, and he told me that something about the service, something about the worship, something about the whole atmosphere told him that God existed. And he was like a hardcore atheist, okay? So then, the person who was sitting next to this PhD professor in our service um, asked, well, would you like to get saved? He said, I would like to, but I don't know why I can't. Okay? So, somebody who wanted to. So now, just like there are people who want to be healed, and yet, not everybody gets healed, right? I mean, some services, I mean, you get 100%, but rarely do you get 100%. 
So how do you explain that then? Right? Do you blame that on God? You know, when somebody doesn't heal, you say, oh, well, God, it's not God's will to heal. Okay? Well, here is this PhD professor. He wanted to, but he said, I don't know what it is, but I can't. So do we blame that on God as well? Do we say, well, I guess it's not God's will to save him. He we even wanted to. But see, obviously, there's another force working too. And we know it's demonic, right? So just as we don't blame uh, the, uh, 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 a person not getting saved to God's will not to save, we should not be doing the same thing for healing as well too. Okay? Because it's the same death on the cross that died for both sicknesses and sin. Okay? So that was the first thing that we established. Does anybody have any questions about that? Yes. My daughter passed away. Okay. I always blame myself for not being more obedient, mm. trustworthy. That's why maybe I wasn't mm. able to hear her. Mm. But you answered, it was God's will. Maybe God's will. God's will not to heal. Is that what you just said? Is that what? No, 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 no. I'm saying it is God's will to heal, to heal always. Okay? Now, that's okay. The lesson today will go over different reasons, hindrances to healing. So if you can hang with me, okay? Yeah, yeah, I think you misheard me there, okay? I believe biblically it is God's will to heal always, just as it's God's will to save always. So the fact that we've all experienced, me too, you know, I had, I had a person who was a greenskeeper at Wildlife Country Club. Faithful man, he served in so many capacities, he had cancer. I was at the hospital with there were 20 of us from our church at the hospital. I prayed with him by his bedside. Like that was like probably my 20th prayer that I prayed over a period of time and he died within five minutes. So I know some people outside were saying, well, I guess it's not God's will that he live and that he die and that he did not get healed. Okay. And it's easy to say that. Okay. But is it really biblical? And we're going to look at some of the hindrances today. Okay. So you can kind of hang with me on that one. Okay. Uh, the second thing that we looked at was in 1 Corinthians 12.9 um, we looked at the New King James Version so sister that's the more accurate ESV is, is not, not even accurate on that one. Verse 9 where it talked about the 9 spiritual gifts and one of them is the healing one and in most translations it says gift of healings or, or there's a couple that says gifts of healing or a few that says gift of healing okay one of those or both of the words are singular in most translation but in the greek and if any of you have checked any greek bible okay you'll see it both words are plural gifts of healings and why is that can you remember why why the greek would have both words being plural what did we say you might remember why would both words be plural okay because there are different kinds of healings for different kinds of diseases yeah. and injuries, right? And, and I even told you that, that when Jesus was whipped before he, he was put on the cross, how many times did they whip him? 39, 39 okay? Back 2,000 years ago, there were 39 known sicknesses in the world. So each stripe represent a different disease. Now, of course, today there are more than 39. Okay, because the, wor the world's just gotten worse and the curse of the earth and all that stuff, right? You know, but back then. So I think that's very symbolic. That, that, that's why it says, by his stripes, each one, you are healed. Or you were healed. In, in, in First Peter is were, and then Isaiah is. is right? Yeah, Isaiah is present tense, and then uh, uh, First Peter is past tense. But still, the idea, each stripe represents a different healing for a different sickness. Right? So that's why I believe that, that uh, it's important to understand the, the Greek there, that gifts of healings, okay? which is exciting to me because in verse 11, it says the Spirit distributes to everyone, which means that different people can have different gifts of healings. Right? For me, I, uh, it, um, we're going to do some of this, especially next week. Um, we're get, it's labeling to me. And of course, God's developing more than just that in me now. That was the main gift of healing that the Lord uh, gave me. And now um, I've been able to pray for shoulders. Um, and um, it, it already two, um, two multiple sclerosis have been healed this year. Um, and, and so to me, that's exciting. I have a, an accountant in the church. Um, 
she's been praying for people with arthritis is because the first time we have a community healing service. Um, we used to have a community healing service the third Friday of every month because we would also hand out groceries. So when they came, we, we have them sit in the sanctuary because they have to wait a few, a couple of, uh, about an hour uh, for all the boxes to be, to be ready. So they'd rather be in our sanctuary where it's air conditioning than outside where it's hot, right? And so um, when, when they're in the sanctuary, then we do a healing service. And um, this is when I was developing my healing team. So my accountant was on the healing team and a woman came up like this. I mean, when you read in the Bible about heal Jesus healing a withered hand, that's exactly what I thought. Because at that time, I was sitting on the drums. Okay, I'm multi-talented. <laughs> you know, I was on a, you know, we we're doing worship and, and, and because, you know, the healing's going on and I didn't want it, I, I wanted to just not pray for anybody because my team's right there. And of course, get the community there. They don't know that I, there's any healing gift in me, right? They just know I'm the pastor, right? And so I'm on the drums because we didn't have a drummer that day and I was watching and I saw this woman walking. I was like, oh, oh, this is going to be a good one, right? And sure enough, my accountant, uh, she just randomly prayed for her because you know, the different people coming up, they were just going to anybody in a, in a, on the healing team. And I'm watching this, and I saw the hand go like this. Wow. And after she was healed, we put a microphone to her and asked, how long has your hand been withered? And she said, five years. And on that day, the hand opened up, and she got saved too. So again, healing that leads to salvation, right? You know, and so since then... Whenever anybody has arthritis in church, I have her pray for them. And she's been developing that gift. And a lot of people with arthritis are getting healed now. That's her gift of healing. You see? So I gotta find out, Mona, who prayed for the deaf people <laughs> because yeah. we're gonna we're gonna start that because we have the gift of healing for deafness, right? So exciting. And, and my vision is that, at least in my church, is that I'll have so many different people on the healing team that can cover every disease and injury out there. So that if any pre-believer comes into our church, I'll say, oh, sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so, you know, okay, here, here's the one, okay, and pray and hallelujah, right? Because we're in, we're in the business of saving people, right? And that, that's the Lord's heart, right? And the reason why he hasn't come back yet, because not enough people have been saved, right? And so, hallelujah. So, anyways, gifts of healing. And then last week, we talked about elements of healing, okay? So, um, can anybody remember one of the three? faith okay and we talked about that already it's important to have strong faith i'm going to talk a little bit more about that a little bit later because that is the reverse of that is is there one of the hindrances to healing okay um what was another one compassion, compassion. okay how, how did that what do we talk about compassion there uh, why is that important in healing because you have to be able to heal like jesus felt for the people right you know, Yeah, and the story that we use, what was that one? Do you remember? Matthew 14, 13. And what was that about, the, the scenario here? John the Baptist. His own cousin, mm -hmm. right? Jesus' own cousin just got executed, <laughs> brutally executed. He deserved a time of mourning. I think nobody would have a problem with that. And yet, even in the midst of all that, the crowds who did not know that he just had a big loss like that followed him. Right. And when Jesus saw the crowd, the Bible says he had compassion. And that stopped him from going to his place of mourning. Because he was. He was heading to, thank you so much. Yeah, sure. He was heading to an isolated place. You know what? If we appreciate Pastor Mike, give him a hand. Okay, he just. Had to, had to figure out how to use a PC again. <laughs> oh, you, oh, you're a Mac guy? Yeah, I'm a Mac guy. Oh, sorry. I should have should, given you a lesson. I added your, your uh, laptop. To, uh, so I can print any time now. You can print any time. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Okay, I'm getting it. Wow, I'm busy husband of yours. Oh, okay, so um, com that's why it's important to have compassion. And also, 1 Corinthians 13 says what? How's that relate? What? Yeah, the love chapter that we all know, right? How does that relate with healing? If you even heal the sick, but have no love, <coughs> your gong. <laughs> Anyone see the gong show before? <laughs> Some of you younger ones don't know what I'm talking about. It's, it's like it was the it was the first version of 
America's Got Talent, right? Or or The Voice, or all these other you know talent shows, right? Yeah. The worst thing, I mean, obviously you want to advance in your round and all that, but the worst thing is you get gong. <laughs> like there's a gong, and, and, and when the judges think you're so bad, just gong, and you're on the show, right? Like, bad enough to have Simon put you down, but they have to be gong. That's even, oh, right? It's so embarrassing. Okay, so compassion. What was the third? Passion. Okay, and somebody elaborate on that? Oh, the poor guys who carried the. Yeah, and what did that demonstrate? Well, it's not, I, if I remember correctly, I don't have my notebook. Um, they all had a certain passion, a certain to gifting, a certain strength that they used hmm. to get that person through the roof. Yeah, hmm. right. and they were persistent. Persistent. That, that could have yeah, been another you know, element of healing right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes we're not, and I, I, I kind of you know, put the two together here, right? Mm -hmm. Because you have that passion, you're going to be persistent. Mm -hmm. That's why I see it one in the same kind of, you know. Um, Sometimes we're just, we're just not persistent enough. Mm -hmm. We quit too early, mm -hmm. right? That's good. Um, yeah, about the 60, actually my book says 50. <laughs> but it, I think that counts, okay? So it could have been 60, okay? You know, it, or Heidi Baker, you just talked about her already, right? What if she quit at 17 blind people? Mm -hmm. Right, or quit at 18, 18, the 18 did not get healed either. What if she quit at 18 people? Mm -hmm. She would have a healing ministry for blind people today, which she now has. And and did I share what her statistics is for how many blind people get healed? Did I share that before? No, seven out of ten. Seventy. Yeah. Like I'll take it. Yeah. I'll take one. I'll take. I don't take. Right. Ten percent. Yeah. If one out of ten blind people get healed, I'll take that one. Right. She got seven out of ten. Yeah, my wife when she heard that stat because her husband and I are really close. Okay. Uh, I, I announced he's coming in in August in our church. And um, so we text each other all day. In fact, there's going to be a lot of texting the next two weeks because the Wimbledon Tennis Championship is going on. And he's gone to the last two. Like he got, he, he got asked to preach in London, and then they'll buy him tickets to Wimbledon, and he's sitting like courtside next to his favorite Roger Federer, right? Wow. Oh, yeah. And right now he and, and uh, Nadal, uh, uh, Rafael Nadal are slated to play in the semifinal. That's going to be big-time texting. Okay, good. Well, I'm, my, my, my guy just uh, hit a forehand winner on your guy. You know, he'll, he'll do that, right? Well, he was the one who, who told me that, that um, the stats with his wife is now 7 out of 10. So when I told my wife that, she said, 7 out of 10, that's really high percentage. I think that's worth $3,000 airfare ticket and the hotel lodging and all that to go down there because there's a 70% chance you're going to come back with at least, at least one eye healed. That's worth it. Because how many people have gone to the doctor and spent a lot more than that and got nothing, right? Like, <laughs> hallelujah. That's passion. That's yeah, persistency, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm trying to instill in you guys. I hope that you're catching a fire here, okay? Mm -hmm. Because I believe it's a biblical fire. Okay. Let me, like I said, I'm going to go over hindrances to healing. But before we do that, I, I still want to kind of set up some things here, okay? Okay. Um, I want you to understand, every one of you have the authority to heal. Have the authority to heal. I mentioned that um, the portions of the Great Commission are in different Gospels, right? Remember I mentioned that? Okay. Let's take a look at each one of them really quickly because each one I believe is going to teach you something. Okay. So I brought my trusty little New Living Translation.